know, sometimes you fail to let Jesus bring happiness into your life like he can. Amen? Well, hallelujah today. Go with me to Philippians, if you would, in your Bibles. I believe that's in the New Testament, I think. Last time I looked. Chapter 3. How many want to know him? <laughs> hallelujah to God. I want the home fires to burn him. I said, I want the home fires to burn him. Philippians chapter 3, 10 through 14. Welcome, everybody. And for, I think, the last two services, we didn't get on Abundant Grace Facebook. We ended up on Sonye. And uh, it ain't going to happen no more because I threatened to fire him. I said, I would fire you right now, but you're volunteering, so I can't fire anybody that's volunteering. So I, you know, just shape up. But it happens. Mistakes happen. I understand that. So uh, I believe we're on Abundant Grace Tabernacle Facebook Live. That's why I got a thumbs up. Somebody must have sent us a message. Hallelujah. We get a message every now and then. Say, yeah, you're sounding good or need to be turned up or, or Mike sure looks good today or something like that, you know. And, uh, and don't worry, I'm getting a haircut this week. I'm not getting dog tagged. My hair's getting long this morning. I said, Jesus, it's getting long. But I go every three weeks. My hair grows good. I, I want to speak to you this morning on a subject, and you'll understand what I'm, when, when I get there. Please remove your rear view mirror. Everybody right now, just reach up, get a hold of it. Jerk it off. Throw it in the back seat. You know, when you're driving down the road, you, you're looking at your present, and the future is on down the road. Now, if you got pulled over and got a ticket, and you drive on, that ticket's behind you. Quit looking back. I mean, you can't change the, the fact that you got a ticket. And what God wants the church to do is quit looking behind us. Could I get an amen? And let's read some scriptures here. Paul says that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. In other words, crucify the old man, right? If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that which also I am apprehended for in Christ. In other words, God saved you for a reason, for a purpose. Not just to come into the church on Sunday and get a little goosebumps and a little feeling and go home and uh, never think of God any that week, never read the word of God, never pray, never seek the presence of God. That ain't why God called you. He called you to serve him, to be a servant unto him. He said, brother, I count not myself to apprehend it, but this one thing I do, quote after me. Forgetting those things which are behind. That's why you don't need a review in it. You are forgetting those things. In other words, you're forgetting about the ticket. And reaching forth unto those things which are the future or before you. The future. If I get on a journey going to Kentucky and I keep looking back and seeing a glimpse of a sign and I'm already past it, if I turn around and go back, I keep turning around and go back, I'll never get to Kentucky, I'll be delayed. Is that right? 
you keep looking back, you're going to be delayed of all the benefits, all the promises that God has for you. As I said earlier, there is a book in heaven written about you, about your life, about what God knows, God knows that you can accomplish and that you can do. Did you know that? There is. So I'm forgetting those things which are behind me. I'm reaching forth unto the things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. So what God is telling us is so that we can focus on the wonders of Jesus Christ more fully understand his principles and his ways and that we might experience the overflowing power of his resurrection. We have that ability in the power of his resurrection and we will be united as one in his suffering as well as his death. We'll be with him. For we are daily crucifying the old man and we're daily putting on the mind of Christ. We're daily presenting our bodies a living sacrifice to God. Is that right? Is that what the Bible says? Are you doing that? Yes, we are doing that. We're trying. We're laboring. But remember, God said when there is spiritual movement, there is also resistance. Because when you are moving spiritually, it terrifies the devil. Somebody didn't think you could ever terrify the devil. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember one time when Amy had an encounter with the devil, he said, I know your daddy, and I hate him. <laughs> Why? Because I've cast him out a lot. <laughs> cast out his spirits. Amen. <laughs> and uh, he's deceived me a few times in my walk with God. He's, he, he's lied to me and cheated on me and all that kind of stuff. But I've become wise to it. So we will be united as one in his suffering as well in his death because we are crucifying the old man. We have not acquired yet his fullness. We have not obtained all the benefits and all the blessings that God has for us. But through God's ability... We will reach our purpose of God and God's plan for our lives and we will fulfill our destiny if we get out of the back. Quit looking back. It will not be our strength or our ability because we're forgetting the past and we're forgetting what we're capable of and we're going to obtain the future. We're going to look to the future. We go after God's we go after God's invitation to us of reaching the high calling of God, the heavenly goal of reaching the victorious prize. How many know what the high calling of God is? That's when you die and make heaven. That's the highest calling you will ever have is obtaining the death of the resurrection. Those that died in the resurrection and have raised up. That's your high calling. And we, we look at death as a sad thing. But it's you're, you're actually what the Bible teaches is at death you are obtaining that which you sought for. You are obtaining the high calling of God and, and that you will be resurrected with the righteousness of God. Amen? Praise God. And God wants us to go forward. Well, Brother Mike, you don't understand. I have this. Well, so have I. So have I. But you don't understand. I, so have I. David was a man after God's own heart, the Bible said. But he had a moral, fa a moral fa failure. He went and got a sent for a, a man's wife, got her pregnant. And tried to get him to go sleep with her, and he never would. So he had him killed. And there was a lot of other failures in his life. 
Number in Israel, for example. And at one point, he, he, was, he would fight against Israel because Saul was after his life. But God said concerning David, he's a man after my own heart. He became one of the greatest kings that ever would ever breathe a breath of life. He was a prophet and a priest unto God. Well, what about his failure? What about him? <laughs> David put it under the blood, sought forgiveness and repentance, and went on and fulfilled the destiny that God had intended for him. Well, what about the present time? Blind Bartimaeus was a man that was blind. He had clothes on that identified him as being a blind man. He looked at his present. He looked at what his past would be, but he heard about the greatness and the goodness of Jesus Christ. He said, I don't care if I was born blind. I don't care if I am born blind right now. And the Bible, give, God gave him a revelation. He said, thou son of David. <laughs> he started crying out to Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me and heal me. Well, guess what? He got his healing. But if Peter kept on his attire that identified him as being a blind man, if Peter said, well, I've been blind since I was a baby, he'd have still been blind till his death. And we got to forget what's behind us. We got to forget what's going on in our life right now. Maybe some kind of negative stuff might be going on in your life right now. Well, what about our future? What about what God wants us to do in the future? Everybody got a pass. David's got a pass. What about Peter when, Lord, I'll die for you. I'll never forsake you. I'll, boy, he just throwed out all this stuff he'd never do. Lord Jesus, I'm willing to die for you. I'm willing to this. And when Jesus is tucked into the judgment of Paul, and Peter and him gather around the fire, and a little woman walks out and says, I know who you are. You're one of his disciples. No, I don't know him. And a little bit later, another woman comes out and said, Oh, your speech betrays you. You're a Galilean. You're one of his. Oh, I don't know the man. The Bible said he began to cuss and swear. I don't know Jesus. Happened three times. And the last time when the crop crew, the Bible said that Jesus looked at him. Oh, what a look that had to be. Jesus looked at Peter with them dark eyes, looked at him through eyes of mercy and grace and looked at him. And the Bible said it got to Peter so bad that he went out and began to weep bitterly. Well, it's over for Peter. He, Jesus told him to go have the gates to the kingdom of God. What are we going to do now? What are we going to do? It's over for Peter. He cussed. He swore. He denied. He even know the Lord, but the Lord looked at him. Oh, what a look it had to be. That would cause a grown man, a fisherman, not these sissy pants boys we got run around today. He was tough. But when Jesus looked at him like that, it got to him so bad. No doubt he thought about all of the boasting and bragging. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. All might deny you, Lord, but right here's one that ain't going to deny you. That's what it, the Bible said about him. He said, though all will forsake you and deny you, but not me, Lord. All that rushed through his mind. But you know at the resurrection... When Mary came to the tomb, he said, you go tell Peter and the apostles. But see, Jesus gave him a forewarning and he didn't catch it. He said, Peter, when you're converted, strengthen the brethren. He had to be reconverted. He had to put it behind him. He had to press toward the prize and the mark and the high calling of God, which is in Jesus Christ. What's your failure? What's your mistake? What's your sin? What's your vexation? What's your oppression? What's hindering you and bothering you? Tire your mirror off, forget it, go on, apply the blood of Jesus to your life and fulfill the call of God that's in your life. We need to go forward 
And it will be not by our strength or our ability, only by the power and the anointing of God. We must cast off from us our defeated attitude, our oppression, our vexation where the enemy comes. Because in our rear view mirror is all of our failures, all of our bad times, all of our suffering, all of our failures, our hurt, our sinful things. And the times that we were so disappointed because we was like Peter. We thought we would never do anything wrong and we slipped up and done something wrong. But the future holds all of God's intentions for us. Let's forget it. As Paul said, I got to press on. I got to push on to do the will of God. Give me Philippians 3, 20 and 21. For our conversation is in heaven. Where's your conversation? For our conversation is in heaven. From whence we also, we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall change, here's what we're saying, our vile bodies, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. We're looking for a change to take place. We're looking for the high calling to take place according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. I don't care what it is, God can conquer it. I don't care what it is, God can break it down. The Bible says we're pulling down strongholds, casting down while the devil's a prince in the power of the air. You're not pulling them up, you're pulling them down. Because that where he operates is in the air. He's a God of this world and he's out to destroy us. But the Bible said God will subdue all things in your life, all things in your life if you will allow him to. Now give me Colossians 1 and 20, please. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Michael. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, we made peace through his death by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say. Whether there be things in earth or things in heaven, what's going to take place? Jesus is going to reconcile all unto himself. If we are alive and remain at the catching away of the church, we will not prevent them which are in the grave and asleep, for the trump of God shall sound and they shall come out of that grave with a glorified body. Say hello for me. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Carl. Happens to the best of us. Hallelujah. I have peace with God. And the devil comes to take my peace, especially when I seek get a spiritual movement going on in my life. I remember years ago I was assistant pastor at another church, and this couple got saved, and and they were struggling, and, and I, I'd go see them, you know, and talk with them. She said, "I don't understand. I never had a problem." I never had mind battles. I never had this. I, I never had that and until I started serving God. I said, well, the devil had you then. He didn't bother you. And he's harassing you now, trying to get you back. If I believe I'm right, she's still holding on to God. <laughs> she's still pressing on, even though she was met with resistance. But Paul says, like this, when you're seeking to do good, evil is present. In other words, when you are in a spiritual movement and you're moving toward things that are good, Al, evil's going to be present. And that's just part of it. That's why God tells us that. Don't worry about it. It's not that you're a corrupt mind. It doesn't mean you have an evil heart. It just simply means the devil is there to stop your movement because you're terrifying him. I'm only preaching what the Holy Ghost told me to preach today, okay? 
1 Timothy 1, please, 11 through 16. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, in other words, God's trusted him. He had a past. He had a past, y'all. If I told you I'm going to have a speaker today, now he's got a, ain't got such a good future. He had people killed, men, women, children, had them killed, had them put in prison, had them locked up. And, uh, and somebody was being stoned and he, he egged it on and held the coat and said, go ahead, kill him. Now, y'all wouldn't be too excited about that, would you? Some of you wouldn't even show up, would you? Huh? Well, that's Paul's life. But according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who enabled me. See, that's the thing about it. Spiritual movement enables you to overcome the wicked one. For that he counted me faithful. Don't worry, God counts you faithful. What God saw in me, I'll never know. But he put me here doing what I'm doing. And I try to be good at it. I try to seek the Lord. I try to hear the voice of God. Because I know of the hour and the time we're in, we must hear the voice of God. He enabled me for that. He counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. I was happy in Freeze, Virginia. But he brought me to North Carolina for this purpose right here. He was faithful to put me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer. He blasphemed God. He, he hated Jesus Christ. He hated that name of Jesus. He hated the apostles. He hated anybody that called on the name of Jesus. He hated anybody that spoke in tongues because they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. He hated them. He hated Peter and them praying for people and God healing them. He hated it. I was injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love. Somebody say love. Love covers a multitude of sin, the Bible says. In Christ Jesus, it's faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus come into the world to save sinners. Paul said, I'm chief. Look at me, I'm the chief sinner. Because I was one born out of due time. I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy. That in me first Jesus Christ. Might show forth a long suffering. For a pattern. Somebody say pattern. To them. Which should hereafter. Believe on him to life everlasting. Now what did Paul say there? He said, God saved me out of all my wickedness, out of all the things that I did. God saved me and made me an apostle of the gospel of Jesus Christ so that when men looked at me, that they could see a pattern of God's love and God's grace and God's mercy. And in other words, if Paul can be saved, anybody can be saved. Is that what he said? That's what it really means. If Paul can be saved and have a reputation like that, anybody can be saved. He said, my life is a pattern to all to know that even though I was a persecutor of the church, God had mercy on me. 
because I was zealous of the law. I had a zeal for God, but it was not according to knowledge. Galatians chapter 1, 11 through 20. But I certify you, brethren. Now what's he talking about? In other words, he's going to say, you have heard of my past. You have heard of my past. Well, I've heard of yours, you've heard of mine, but look where we're at right now. Look where we're at right now. Our past ain't got nothing to do with where we're at right now. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which preached of me is not after man. Now what Paul trying to tell you, yeah, I got a past. You remember my past. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my conversation in the times past in the Jews' religion. How that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and I wasted it. He said, you've heard about me. You knew how I persecuted the church and wasted it. And I profited it in my Jewish religion above many of my equals in my own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his divine influence, by his grace, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. I didn't go up to Jerusalem, them which were apostles before me, but I went unto Arabia and returned again unto Damascus, that after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and bowed with him fifteen days, but of the apostles saw I none except James the Lord's brother. Now these things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Now what's Paul saying? You've heard of my conversation. You heard about me. You heard that I was a zealous religious person. Religion don't do nothing but take people to hell. Religion takes people to hell. A lot of people's faith is in their church, their religion. My faith is in God. I don't believe in religion. I believe in Christianity, salvation. So what Paul is saying, you knew how I was. You knew all the things I did, but because of God's grace and God's purpose and God's plan for my life, he said, I didn't learn this gospel by spending time with the apostles. I spent very little time with them, so I went into Arabia and got the revelation of Jesus Christ from God himself so therefore, I certify to you the gospel that I'm preaching is not after man or not by the apostles that taught me, but I received it by revelation, by separation from religion and separation from the apostles because God wanted to use me as an example because people would hear of how I was and they will now know and certify that which I preach is not after man, but is after the revelation that God gave me. That's what he's saying. I receive a lot of revelation from God. I hear God's voice. We talk quite often. Like when I'm walking around up here praying, I said, God, what you going to do today? What do you want me to say? Are you going to speak to the people? Are you going to do this? Anybody you need to give me a word to, God, what you want to do today? Lord, I'll get out of the way. You take my place. I mean, no. I want a God thing. That's what Paul wanted was a God thing. He'd had a, he had a man thing. Made a murderer out of him. He had a man thing. He was fighting against God and didn't even know it. That's what religion does. People that's not Pentecost 
speak and fight against Pentecost because it's a religious thing. And they don't know they're fighting against God. Mock holiness, separation, I'm holy, and seek to be holy. Who taught the sun where to stand? I don't know where it's coming from. Come on, Michael, cut something off back up. It was Carl's fault. I knew Carl. Or Susan. Carl or Susan. One of them two's a guilty party. I'll fire him next Sunday. Michael's sitting back there looking like a calf lost in a hailstorm. <laughs> He's looking down at his computer. I ain't done nothing. It's like my, my principal called me. Been out of high school 50 some years. He said, this is John R. Weatherman. I said, I ain't done nothing. <laughs> but it tickled me to death. 50-some years, my high school principal calls me and said, I've heard about you. I've read your book. I've heard about the churches and all the stuff you do for the work of God. And he just said, I won't tell you, I was proud of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Paul said, hey, man. You've heard about my past, but the gospel I preach, it ain't religion. It ain't man's views, man's ideas, but straight from the throne room of Almighty God. Give me Philippians 3, 4 through 6. My wife looks at these scriptures and says, my God, you'll never get them through. I said, yeah, I will. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinketh that he hath, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I the more. Concerning zeal, I persecuted the church. Touching the righteousness of the law, I was blameless. Is that it? Four through six, okay. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, is touching the law of Pharisees. Well, I don't guess it's coming. Well, there's a verse 6 that went with that, and I ain't going to turn to it. There it is. Concerning zeal, persecuting and touch, those righteous, which is of law blameless. He said, I, I learned at the feet of Gamaliel. I knew all everything there was to know about the law. As far as zeal, there ain't nobody in my class could touch me because I had a zeal of God. He said, but that don't matter. That don't matter. I can't worry about what I did in the past. But he illustrates that to show us the mercies of God, the grace of God, and the revelation that God can bring to you even if you are religious and you have been taught religious things, God can bring revelation into your life. Acts 22. Now that's a lot of reading here. But what I did, instead of going to Acts 9, on Paul's, on the road to Damascus where he has an encounter with God, my brethren and fathers, hear ye my defense. I'm fixing to defend myself, he said, which I make known unto you. And when they heard that, that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence and said, I am verily a man which am a Jew born in Tarsus, city of Cilicia. Unto which promises our twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night. <coughs> hope to come for which hope's sake. King Agrippa, he's addressing the, the, the king, the president. Somebody said, I didn't think religion and politics mixes. Oh, yeah, it does. That's the biggest lie the devil ever told. And a preacher that will say, I don't carry that into the pulpit, 
he just don't want people to know what he really believes. Y'all know what I stand for, don't you? Until the prophets with 12 tribes said, I'm accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible to you that God should raise the dead? Verily, though with myself, though I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which things I also did in Jerusalem, having received authority from the chief priests when they were put to death. I said, Amen. I gave them my voice against him. Kill him. Kill him. Them Jesus people, kill him. That's what the Bible's saying. He said, kill them. They don't deserve to live. They're transgressing the laws of God. He said, I gave my voice against them and I punished them often. Exceedingly mad against them. I persecuted them even under strange cities. He didn't just persecute them around his little place. He went from city to city, from town to town, to find a Jesus person so he could persecute them, could put them in jail, could speak his voice to kill them. Yeah, that's the apostle Paul, the great apostle. Yep, that was Paul, but that was Paul's past. Whereunto as I went to Damascus with authority. I'm on the road to Damascus. I got a commission. Who did he get the commission from? The chief priest. Where does these people that mock and laugh at Pentecostal people, where do they get their commission from? That lying devil in the pulpit that's telling them that died out with the apostles. It ain't real. It's not for us today. Liar, liar, liar. They're lying to you. Just like the chief priest was misleading Paul. I looked upon him and said, The God of our fathers has chosen thee, that thou shouldest know us his will, and see the just one, and shouldest hear the voice of thy mouth. For thou shalt be a witness unto all men of what has seen and heard. Now, why tarest thou? Arise and be baptized, washing away thy sins, calling on what? <coughs> on what? If you're, if you're getting baptized, you better be calling on the name of the Lord. If you're going to let somebody baptize you, it better be in the name of the Lord. That's Bible doctrine. Catholic doctrine teaches titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's, that's Catholic doctrine, and Catholic says anybody that uses that formula is a Catholic. That's Catholic said that, not me. Don't get mad at me. Unto which promises are 12 tribes instantly serving God? We done done that, ain't we? Okay, where are we at? 26, 7 through 12? Okay. Unto which promises the 12 tribes instantly serving God day and night came? For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I'm accused of the Jews? Did we skip one, Michael? Did we do Acts 22? Well, we, you get in the picture. You get an idea. We just went over this, right, Mike? Huh? Okay, why should it be thought that thing incredible with you that God, go ahead. Go ahead. Should raise the dead, I verily thought that was in myself that I ought to do the things contrary to the name of Jesus Christ, which things I did, also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints, many of the saints, many of the saints, did I shut up. Where at? In prison. I shut them up in prison. Hallelujah. Mm, glory to God. I fulfilled my commission. My cup's running over. Hallelujah. 
having received authority from the chief priest. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them and said, Hallelujah, another Jesus person put to the death. Glory to God. I'm just adding a little life to it, but that's what it's saying. I will punch them, I punch them off in every sin of God compelled them to blaspheme and being exceedingly mad against them. What was the driving force behind it? Satan. Boy, he's a big, I mean, he was, man, he was right in there with them Jewish rabbis. He, he was one of the top, but he's been driven mad. The devil hates the gospel of Jesus Christ. He hates the purity of it. That's what the Lord told me. He said, the, the need today is the purity of the gospel. I was mad against them. I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon I went to Damascus with authority commission from the chief priest. Now, let me know what happened Paul on the road to Damascus. Somehow we have skipped that, so I'll just briefly tell you. He's on the road to Damascus with letters from the priest to, to find anybody calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that he would put them to prison or to death. But while he's on the road to Damascus, it's Acts, 8, 9, Acts 9, I think it is. There appeared on him a great light, and the Bible said he fell to the ground. Blind. And he heard a voice speak to him, Saul, Saul, why perse persecutest thou me? Who art thou, Lord? Had a little reason about it. Who art thou, Lord? He said, Man, I'm Jesus, whom you are persecuting. I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with, with me saw indeed the light, and they were afraid. But they heard not the voice of him that spake unto me. And and I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise, go unto Damascus. Let's back up. You, you find Mike. Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? A note, keep your mouth off your brothers and sisters because they are the body of Christ. What you do to them, you're doing to Jesus himself because he's the head. Make sense? What are you persecuting me for? You're killing my, you're killing my body, man. Arise, go into Damascus, there shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see for the glory of the light, being led by the hand of them that were, were with me. I said, that were, were with me, I came into Damascus. And one Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, having good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, You persecutor, you, you killer, you murderer. He said, Brother Saul. Because God had done come to Ananias and said, He's a chosen vessel unto me. He is to bear my name before kings and rulers of the world and to the Gentiles. And said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour he was looked, I looked upon him, and he said, The God of thy fathers has chosen thee that thou shouldest know his will and see the just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth, for thou shalt be a witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now why tarest thou? Be baptized. Washing away thy sins. Call it. Call it. Somebody say call it. On the name of the Lord. 
Like I say, if you're going to get baptized, you better get down in the name of Jesus Christ or you're just going down a wet person coming up a wet person. The power and authority is in the name. No other name whereby men we must be saved except through and by the name. How many is going to keep your rear view mirror torn off, thrown in your back seat, and don't be gluing it back on? Thank God for four people. Hallelujah. Thank God for the four people that's willing to do that. <laughs> I know y'all doing that. David had a past. Peter had a past. Blind Barnabas had a past. Paul definitely had a past. Oh, but God said, God used me as a pattern to show y'all. If Paul can be saved, anybody can be saved. Get over it. Get over it. If you have genuinely repented to God for any failure in your life, it's under the blood. Get over it. Get over it. You're a child of God. Get your destiny. Fulfill God's will and purpose for your life. Receive all the benefits that God has for you. I don't care what tradition, religion told you. Hell's going to be full of religious people. Brother Mike, you wouldn't say stuff like that. Well, I'm just saying what the Bible says. I got permission. God gave it to me. Do I care? That I'm not popular. No. Not one bit. I'm not going to compromise the gospel that God's given me that I have revelation in for popularity. I'm too old. I need to be stronger and stronger, harder and harder. I preach out of love and compassion, I do. I was preaching about denominationalism the other night. I'm all for the people. That's in there. I'm for them. But I'm against those men that make these rules and regulations and bring the, their people into bondage. I'm for the people, not the big wigs. See, the big wigs are sending Paul down a road of murder. It wasn't for the grace of God, Paul would be in hell right now. For killing and persecuting the church of God. Well, let's see what God has to say Wednesday is all I can tell you. All right. Next Sunday, looking forward to our dinner. And if you can be here and want to be here, get your name on the list. Sorry, I never knew you. Hallelujah. Ain't you glad you come to church today? Hallelujah. Isn't God awesome? Isn't the word of God powerful? Sharper than any two-edged sword. In a cut asunder, even the thoughts and tents of the heart, the marrow of the bone, powerful word of God. When you don't read the word of God, look me in my face. Everybody look. I want to see your eyes. When you do not read the word of God, you're laying down your weapon that God give you to fight the devil. And you lay it down just like it ain't nothing. Come on. I'm, I'm looking out for you folks. Believe me, I am. All right. I look at all good saved people today, so hallelujah. Now our crowds from between now and first year, Christmas is coming on. People's got things to do. I understand that. Don't got a problem with it. 
And after the first year, maybe we get back to normal. And then we'll run normal to vacation time. That's the way it runs. Then it starts in and out again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, I love Jesus today. Somebody let say, I love Jesus today. So I love Jesus today. I love Jesus. I love his word. Oh, I love his presence, don't you? I tell you what, you can't beat being in the presence of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, God bless everybody. YouTube, Facebook, whoever. God love you and God bless you.